Welcome. Welcome one and all to The Late Show. Please have a seat. No, please. Thank you. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Uh, Keen-eyed viewers may notice tonight's show looks just a little different. I am not presently in the Ed Sullivan Theater. I'm in the Ed Sullivan House. Because this morning, I woke up feeling uh, not great, flaming throat, a little sweaty, coffee. I took one of those at-home tests, and it said that I am not pregnant. Then I took a COVID test, and it told me I am pregnant with COVID. So I took three more tests, and they all agreed. I just want to take a second here to salute the manufacturers for making such a consistent and reliable product. But did it really have to be so reliable? I was really looking forward to meeting Jada Pinkett Smith tonight. The only upside is, since I am isolating, no one can slap me for having her name in my mouth. So that's it. I have COVID-19. Again. Even though it's 2023. I should at least have something new, like COVID-23. I hear it has a better camera and a USB-C charging port, so you can use it in Europe. Right now, I'm feeling, uh, let's say, fine. Just a sore throat and a bad case of the lonelies. And I can I can hear you saying awe in my mind, which only makes me lonelier, but thanks anyway. So uh, for now, I'm here in my palatial curtain shop. I learned something uh, interesting about COVID protocols today. We still have them. That came as something of a surprise. I have been told I can return to the office and do the show live. Uh, once I test negative, though, so uh, I will keep you abreast. Luckily, I'm ready for this. I'm basically doing uh, the show podcast style, and I've got plenty of experience thanks to all my friends over at Strike Force 5. So just think of this show as Stephen Forced Home. I'm already in podcast mode, as you can see. I got all the equipment, which reminds me, this episode brought to you by Ryan Reynolds Mattresses. Now everyone gets to sleep with Ryan Reynolds. He probably owns a mattress company, does he? I don't know. There's no one here but me. I don't know. I'm I'm looking off as if there's someone else here. He owns everything else. He's got to have a mattress company. Hey, you know who else is probably feeling a little sick right now? The House GOP. They can't agree on a speaker after kicking out Kevin McCarthy almost two weeks ago. And when last we talked on last Thursday night, it looked like they were going to pick Louisiana congressman and man caught eating your invisible hoagie, Steve Scalise. Now, by the time we aired that show on Thursday, it was already clear Scalise did not have the vote. So on Friday, the Republicans tried again and nominated Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. <laughs> I just got a little nauseous. <clears throat> and I don't think it's the COVID. <clears throat> Jordan is an ultra conservative election denier and also a what happened at Ohio State denier. You could not pick a worse man for Speaker of the House. And keep in mind, the GOP just had Kevin McCarthy, so they tried. Now, the bad news here is that the new Speaker might be Jim Jordan, but the good news is there's no good news. Luckily, and this is true, Netflix has released a live stream of tiny baby animals at the Cleveland Zoo. Look at you. Who'd be a better Speaker than Jim Jordan? You would. Look at you. Whoosh. He's waking up. Everybody stay quiet. Plus, there's still hope. Remember, to get elected, Jordan or anyone else would need 217 votes, and that feels nearly impossible in this fractured caucus, as Missouri's Mark Alford explained. You could put Jesus Christ up for Speaker of the House, and he still wouldn't get 217. Well, that's true. The modern GOP would never vote for Jesus. I mean, he was soft on Samaritans and commanded everyone to sell their possessions and give the money to the poor. The guy was clearly a socialist. He was worse than a socialist. He was a Christian. Cut your hair, you hippie. Put on some pants. Leave the sandals back at your yurt, comrade. So, <clears throat> Jordan needs 217, which means he can only lose four votes. And on Sunday... An anonymous GOP House member told CNN that there are roughly 40 no votes within the caucus and that he'd personally heard from 20 members who have pledged to block Jordan's path. So this weekend, Jordan unleashed a pressure campaign, including posting the phone numbers of mainstream GOP lawmakers 
they count as holdouts and encouraging followers to flood the Capitol switchboards with calls demanding they back Mr. Jordan or face the wrath of conservative voters. And we all know what conservative voters use to express their wrath. The poo poo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Now, the pressure actually seems to be working because just today, Jordan got the support of several holdouts, including Alabama congressman and man who gets his hair cut at the Lego factory, Mike Rogers. One of the sober lawmakers making this momentous decision tomorrow will be New York Congressman George Santos, seen here wearing this season's hottest inflatable pants. On Friday, Santos made headlines for getting into a confrontation with a protester who asked him about the conflict in Israel. But that's not what got people talking. What got people talking was during this altercation, Santos was holding a mystery baby. That's pretty weird. But keep in mind, all babies are a mystery. I fed you. I burped you. I changed you. It's 3 a.m. Just tell me what you want. Here's my debit card. The PIN number is 5418. Have a party. When reporters asked if the baby was his, Santos replied, not yet. Forget Katara Ravash. George Santos' new alter ego is Rumpelstiltskin. Santos later explained who the baby belonged to, introducing it to Kevin McCarthy and saying, one of my staffers, baby. Look at this baby, Mr. Speaker. So either he forgot that they voted McCarthy out or he's telling us the baby is the new speaker. I mean, it's fewer tantrums and more object permanence than Jim Jordan. Santos then posted a video about the incident to his Twitter page where something kind of fun happened in the comments. One user asked him, what's your favorite Taylor Swift song? And Santos responded, bad blood. Don't judge me. I'm going through my reputation era. Bitch, a bad blood is not on the reputation album. It is on 1989. This man can't even pretend to like Taylor Swift correctly. Oh, me? I'm a total Swifty. My favorite Taylor Swift song? Mm, probably the one that goes, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. The real Slim Shady. Speaking of Taylor Swift, there's news about Taylor Swift. <laughs> Please calm down. She's not here, and neither are you. That was videotape. I'm barely here. Taylor had a huge blockbuster debut this weekend. Of course, I'm talking about Tay Tay going public with Travis Kelsey in a PDA filled date night in New York City. Yes, Taylor is his love story. She's enchanted and can't shake it off. And Travis is her football term. I know less about that. Whatever, touchback. That's a thing, right? Again, there's no one there, but he's saying yes. And you know they're for reals, y'all, because according to reports, they were holding hands, interlocked fingers and all, y'all. Whoa, interlocked fingers. That's like first base, I think. Again, I don't know much about football. The pair popped up on this weekend's episode of Saturday Night Live, which was hosted by Pete Davidson, and they were spotted heading to the show's after party together. Wow. They put their relationship to the hardest test any couple can, going anywhere near Pete Davidson. Hmm. In smaller news, Taylor's Eras Tour movie premiered this past weekend and shattered the global record for a concert film. I saw it. It was great. I sang. I laughed. I screamed along with my fellow Swifties who were so excited that they came to the theater despite their high fevers, loss of taste and smell. And OK, that's where I got COVID. I got COVID. Taylor's version. President Biden was in Philadelphia this weekend to talk about the economy, and his speech got off to a bit of a bumpy start. Good save, Joe. No one noticed. But please, stop doing anything can we can we fill his shoes with weights so he just pops back up like a weeble oh here i go okay just kidding jack i'm back oh see you on the side once biden took the stage he worked the crowd a little it's good to be almost home hey guys i live in delaware okay 
And by the way, I'm a big Pennsylvania guy, but you have an advantage in Philly. One, I married a Philly girl. Two, you're between Scranton and Wilmington. You know, Scranton, you guys have no sense of humor, man. <laughs> Those were punchlines? Thanks for coming out to the Chuckle Hut. I love being Milwaukee, but actually I'm from Sheboygan. It's about an hour north, 50 minutes if there's no traffic on 43. Wow, that's a tough room. You could also take 57 to 23 East. Nothing? That joke usually kills on Google Maps. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Jada Pinkett Smith and comedian Ricky Velez. Plus, I might start hallucinating from a high fever. When we come back, meanwhile, get me some Advil, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> 